Well, good evening and welcome to Gateway Church Cymru Online. My name is Luke Morgan, I'm the pastor of Gateway and I'd love to give you a warm welcome tonight. Thank you for joining us for our online Bible study. You know, it's been so great over these last few months just to be able to learn about the Bible together, learn how to read and study the Bible. And it's been great over these last few weeks to, to dive into God's Word together. And I really do hope that this series, The Parables of Jesus, which we've been going through over the last couple of weeks, I really do hope that this has helped you to study the Bible for yourself. And I do pray that you're beginning to grow in your understanding of God's Word and also that God is speaking to you and encouraging you at this time. Well, tonight we're going to continue looking at the parables of Jesus. But before we do that, I want to encourage you, please go and grab your Bible, grab a notepad, iPad, whatever it is to take notes on. And we're just going to begin our time together just by praying and asking the Lord to just come and help us as we open up his word tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we just thank you tonight that we can be found once again in your presence. And Lord, as we come around your word once again, Lord, as we open your word, Jesus, I pray you will help us to have open hearts. Jesus, I pray that you would come by your Holy Spirit and just speak to us tonight, Lord. Lord, we just want to see you, Lord. We want to know you in a greater way, Lord. And Lord, I just pray tonight that we will have ears to hear what you are saying and help us to apply the truth of your word to our lives, I pray. Lord, I thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder, have you ever lost anything that's valuable to you? I know that I have many times and actually it's starting to become a bit of a frequent thing for me. I don't know whether it's because I'm getting older or what, but uh, I seem to be misplacing quite often my house keys. Here they are, right here. I've got them. I know where they are right now. But it seems to happen over the last few weeks and especially on Fridays. Now, Fridays, I, I go down to the church and we still run a food bank in our church, as many of you know. But it seems to be on a Friday, I can't find my keys whether it's before I leave to go for food bank or whether it's while I'm down in food bank and we've packed up. For whatever reason, I, I'm always hunting for my keys. I'm searching my pockets. I look around the house before I leave. I'm, I'm looking everywhere for them. Or when I'm down the church then, I'll often look up the office. I look at the back box. You know, I look in the door. I look at all these different places just to try to find my keys you know, when you lose something that's valuable, it causes anxiety or worry and fear to, to stir up within our lives, doesn't it? And you know, that's what's been happening. But, you know, I've been fortunate. I found my keys every single time and thank God for that. But, uh, you know, I wonder if you lost anything that's valuable to you. You know, I, I was even thinking this week, my, my dad once lost something that was far more valuable even than house keys. He once lost his wedding ring. And it was about when I was about 11 or 12 years old. I remember that my parents decided to take us swimming, me and the boys swimming on a weekend. And uh, we headed down to Glenith Swimming Pool. That was a nice treat to go down there for us, uh, for us boys. We used to enjoy going down there swimming. And I remember we went swimming. You know, my parents took us. We had a great time in the pool. All of a sudden then, when we were on our way out of the pool, my dad looked down on his hand and he couldn't see his wedding ring. And I remember seeing the, the panic in his face. I'm sure he was worried that my mother would kill him, obviously, for losing his ring. But he, you could see he just didn't remember where it was. And I remember us boys, we were swimming around the pool. I think he called some other people as well to have a look around on the bottom of the pool. We were looking for it. We looked through the changing rooms, through the locker rooms, but it was nowhere to be found. I remember then going home and, and him looking through the house and trying to find it, but he couldn't find his wedding ring anywhere. I actually think he went back down to Glenith and I know that they did empty the pool and they couldn't see any, they couldn't see the ring at the bottom of the pool. It was an absolute nightmare. And so in the end, my dad ended up having a new wedding ring. He couldn't remember where he had put it. And then about, well, I'd say about five or six years ago, I remember my parents, they were updating the kitchen and they were clearing through the drawers ready for the kitchen. And I remember just opening up, I think it was my mother actually, she opened up the one of the middle drawers in the kitchen and she was pulling stuff out and there it was right at the bottom of that drawer was my dad's old wedding ring. So my dad's got two wedding rings. I don't know why he hasn't sold one on cash for gold. He could have made a bit of money for that, but uh, he managed to find his wedding ring and now he wears that original wedding ring. But you know, my dad, he couldn't remember where he had put it. He had searched everywhere, but he couldn't remember where he had left it. 
You know, as we come to Luke chapter 15 tonight, we see a similar situation. You know, in this chapter, Jesus describes three t- kinds of lostness. Now, Jesus, he was talking to a crowd of people who had gathered to hear him speak, which was quite often, you know, wherever Jesus went, there was always a crowd listening to him preaching and teaching. And the crowd was filled with all different types of people. And there were also some tax collectors and sinners there. And, you know, the sinners, they were the outcasts of society, but yet they were drawn to Jesus. And as I said, in the crowd were some religious people called Pharisees. And these religious people, they were gossiping among themselves, criticizing Jesus. They weren't there just to hear from Jesus. They were there to pick holes in his ministry, to fight, try and find something to trip him up on and to get him you know, prosecuted for that. But, you know, they were complaining and grumbling at the fact that sinners were in the crowd listening to Jesus. And then Jesus, you know, he he loved that. We see that Jesus he's known as a friend of sinners. He still is a friend of sinners. And so Jesus, he he obviously knew what was going on with these Pharisees. And so he teaches these three parables. He shares these three parables. A parable is a, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And he shares these to describe lostness. And he's, his whole purpose in sharing these three parables is to show God's heart towards the lost. Now, the first parable, which we looked at last week, which Jesus shares, is about sheep. And people would have understood this at that time in that culture, in that society. It was an agricultural society, so there would have been a lot of farmers and shepherds. So they could relate to that. And then Jesus talks about another situation where something else gets uh, gets lost. And in this parable here in Luke chapter 15, verse 8 to 10, Jesus shares a parable about the lost coin. And that's what we're going to look at tonight, the parable of the lost coin. And this is what it says in Luke 15, verse 8 to 10. And it says... Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Won't she light the lamp and sweep the entire house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she will call her in her friends and neighbours and say, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost coin. In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. You know, we see here in this parable, this woman, she had 10 silver coins coins but she ends up losing one of these coins and obviously this coin is valuable to her these coins are valuable to her because she goes through all this effort in trying to find this one coin you know she'll do anything to try and find it as it says in verse 8 that this woman she ends up lighting this lamp she sweeps through her house she looks diligently to try and find this lost coin and Jesus is saying here you know that that this lost coin is obviously valuable to her Even though she had nine other coins, this one coin, this one lost coin was valuable to her. And so she turned her house upside down just to try and find this lost coin. You know, as we look at this parable, I think it's important for us to note that that this coin didn't actually try to find the woman. Nor did the the coin try to seek the woman. It didn't try to find her. It It wasn't even looking for the woman. This coin wasn't looking for the woman or try to find her. But actually, we can see it was the woman who was trying to find the lost coin. And so she sweeps through the house, looking through every nook and cranny. And what happens when she does end up finding the lost coin? Because in the end, she finally finds it. It says in Luke 15 verse 9, it says, And when she finds it, she calls in her friends and neighbours and says, Rejoice with me because I have lost my coin. You know, it's absolutely amazing to think that she decides to throw a party because she's finally found this lost coin. Even though she had nine others, she rejoices in the fact that she found this one lost coin and she holds this party. Now, you might be wondering, what is Jesus trying to get at you and in telling this story about losing a coin? What what has this got to do with us? How does this apply to us? And, And even the crowd who is listening at that time, what's the point in this parable? Well, Jesus shares the point in verse 10 where he says, In the same way, there is joy in the presence of God's angels when even one sinner repents. Jesus was saying here that when one person decides to turn away from the life they were going, turn away from their sin and follow Jesus, the Bible says there is joy in heaven. There is rejoicing in heaven when one lost person is finally found And, you know, just as I said, it's interesting to note that the coin wasn't trying to find the woman. Jesus is basically saying here that we as humanity, we are like that coin. 
And God is, you know, he's like that woman. He is seeking that which is lost. And God came chasing after us when we were lost. We didn't do anything. We weren't actually looking for God. But God in his mercy and grace came chasing after us. He pursued humanity to make a way possible that even though we were lost in our, dre- in our trespasses and sin, go into a lost eternity at just the right time. God found us. We heard that gospel story and he found us and he He has saved us. I know Jesus says there, there is a party in heaven over one person who gets saved. Now that doesn't mean God doesn't care about those who are saved. He loves those who are saved. But God's heart is always for the lost. God pursues the lost. But you know, it's interesting to note that Jesus says there that uh, in the same way that is joy in the presence of God's angel when even one sinner repents. Notice there that Jesus doesn't say that there is joy in heaven when one person gets saved. He actually says when there is one sinner who repents. In other words, Jesus is saying here, and he's telling us here about the importance of repentance. Now, repentance is a bit of an old fashioned church word, but you might be wondering, what does repentance mean? Well, basically, repentance is a change of mind, a change of heart, it's a change of direction. Just like when you're driving on the road and you've got your sat-nav on, you've got Siri on and you don't know where you're going. And all of a sudden, you know, you've made a wrong turn and you hear Siri say, make a U-turn where possible. That's basically what repentance is. We were going in the wrong direction. We were going one way. We were lost. We were going in the wrong direction. But then God, in his mercy, we hear the gospel and we decided we want to follow that. We put our trust in God and we make a change in direction. And God turns our lives around and pe- sets us on the right path. You know, it says there that it was never said that, you know, a person is saved first and then they can repent afterwards. We know that when it comes to salvation, that there must be repentance first. You know, I actually think this is something that's missing within church today. You know, we want people to make a decision. We'll, we'll give, tell people to say the sinners pray. But, you know, a lot of people are challenged to turn away, first of all. You know, it's important for us to, to do that, first of all. You know, we can't get saved unless we acknowledge, first of all, that we need saving. Unless we see, first of all, the mess and what our, our sin in our lives and what it, caused Jesus, what, what it caused to happen to Jesus. We need to repent and acknowledge that sin and then turn away from it. There must be repentance and faith. And, you know, at Gateway Church, we'll always preach that. You know, it's not just about saying, Jesus, I want to follow you. There's got to be this decision, first of all, that we're going to turn away from the life we go in and place our trust in Jesus. You know, repentance and faith are two sides of the same coin. And this is the coin that was lost and was now found. And that's why Jesus is saying here, there's this joy before the angels in one sinner who repents. You know, we all were once lost. But God, in his mercy, we heard that gospel. We heard what Jesus did and we placed our trust in him. We repented and there is joy in heaven. We once were lost and now we are found. Well, I do pray tonight that you've been encouraged by this parable. You know, this parable is very similar to the first par- uh, p- first parable that Jesus shared in Luke chapter 15 about the lost sheep. It shows God's heart towards the lost, that God is pursuing everybody who is lost. His heart is for the lost. So I do pray you've been encouraged tonight by God's word. And maybe you're watching this tonight and maybe you've heard about how God loved you so much that he went to the cross to die for you so that you could be saved, so that you could be found. And you're wondering, how can I start a relationship with Jesus? Well, in a moment, there's going to be a comment that will pop up uh, on whatever platform you're watching this on. And all I'd like you to do is please like that comment. And we'll get in touch with you and I'll get in touch with you just to to give you some information about how you can begin a relationship with Jesus. Please know it is the best decision that you will ever make. But we'd love to help you with that. So please like that comment if you would like to make, uh, if you'd like more information about how you can begin a relationship with Jesus. But know tonight that God loves you so much that he pursued you and he's chasing after you. Maybe you watch in this tonight and maybe you've wandered away. Know that God hasn't given up on you. Even though we we might not be seeking God, God hasn't given up on you. He loves you. He's made a way possible for you to come back to him. Know that tonight. But may we be encouraged that God's heart is for the lost. Well, please know that we as a church, we are here for you. We are praying for you. Please stay connected with us as a church through our website, gatewaychurchcamry.co.uk and through our social media platforms. And we'd love for you to join us once again on Sunday for Church Online at 10.30am and 5pm. I do hope you have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you soon. God bless.